The brilliant 17th century French physicist Blaise Pascal, who was an astute observer of life, once said, all men seek happiness. This is without exception. Whatever different means they employ, they all tend to this end. The cause of some going to war and of others avoiding it is the same desire in both, attended with different views. The will never takes the least step but to this object. This is the motive of every action of every person, even of those who hang themselves. I agree with Pascal. You and I as human beings have been hardwired by God to seek happiness, to seek joy. Happiness, for too many of us, is based on the circumstances of life. Jesus Christ offers a deeper type of happiness, which is joy. Joy, according to Christ, comes from loving God and loving people. It comes from understanding your purpose in life. At the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus put it this way, Blessed, joyful, happy, satisfied are the poor in spirit. To be poor in spirit means to be humble before God. Humility is not self-degradation. Humility is understanding who God is and understanding who I am and understanding who other people are. Have you ever considered the fact that except for one minor exception, all of the universe is made up of others? It is too easy for me to think that I am the center of the universe. I am what life is all about. That is a fantasy. That is living in la-la land. Except for one minor exception, the entire universe is made up of others. And so joy comes from understanding that God made me to live for Him and to live for others. And there's this paradox in life. It's the paradox that Jesus taught, which is, as I learn to forget myself and to focus on Christ and to focus on others, I will be surprised by joy. Secondly, Jesus said, blessed, joyful, deeply happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What's he talking about? How can I be joyful and mourn? It's very simple. Guilt rips happiness and joy out of your life and out of mine. I can't enjoy life if I'm feeling guilty, neither can you. To mourn over my wrongdoing means to turn to Christ and to say, I am genuinely sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. To mourn, as defined by Christ, means to turn to the person who I have hurt and say, I am genuinely sorry. Would you please find it in your heart to forgive me? And then when Christ forgives us, when people forgives us, forgive us, and we experience reconciliation with God and reconciliation with people, that produces joy. I've experienced that many times in my life. When I have sinned against God by sinning against people, I have to ask both God and people to forgive me. And guilt rips joy. Guilt rips happiness out of life. Jesus says, come to me and learn to mourn, learn to grieve, learn to be genuinely sorry for the wrong that you've done, and then accept the forgiveness of God. And don't go around hammered into the ground by guilt. It makes sense. Thirdly, Jesus says in the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness does not mean weakness. Meekness means use your power under control to serve God others. You know what it's like to try and experience a good relationship with a spouse who's struggling with selfishness and pride. You know what it's like to try and build a friendship with a totally self-absorbed, arrogant individual. It's almost impossible. Why? Because the proud person doesn't care about you. The proud person could give a rip about you. The proud person is totally absorbed with himself or herself. Pride condemns us, arrogance condemns us to incredibly superficial relationships. There's no real joy, there's no real happiness. There is simply the thrill of wearing a mask that I'm superior to others. And it's a mask, it's a lie. Jesus points out that real joy, real happiness comes from living a life of humility where I learn to forget myself and to focus on the needs of other people, to focus on the desires of other people, to focus on how can I help other people have a better life. Then we will be surprised 
by joy. C.S. Lewis, the great Christian thinker who taught at Cambridge and Oxford universities in England, wrote an autobiography called Surprised by Joy. It's about his coming to faith in Christ. C.S. Lewis was, at one point in his life, a devout atheist. He didn't want God in his life because he viewed God as the big interferer. And he didn't want people interfering in his life, and he definitely didn't want God interfering in his life. But when he began to realize that the evidence is that God does exist, the evidence is Christ is reliable, when he began to seriously begin to open his life, he was surprised by joy when he put his faith in Christ. And that is the joy that Christ wants to give you. It's not a joy that's based on the circumstances of life. It's a joy that's based on the goodness of God. It's a joy that's experienced when we open our lives up to the love of God and to the love of people and to loving other people. Have you experienced that joy, that deep, profound happiness that comes from putting your faith in Christ and enjoying His love? A happiness and a joy that comes from loving other people, even when they don't love you, even when they're mean to you. But the love of God so fills your heart and your life that it overflows into the lives of people who do not deserve it. That is where real happiness, real joy comes from. Is it not time for you to respond to the love of God as revealed in Christ? Is it not time for you to put your faith in Christ? You can make that decision very simply by asking Christ to forgive you for your wrongdoing, by putting your trust in Him that He died on a cross to forgive you and give you eternal life, and by committing your life to live for Christ. That is the most important decision a human being can make. I'm the pastor of Grace Community Church. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30 at Sachs Middle School in New Canaan, Connecticut. Take the Merritt Parkway to exit 37, go to the end of the ramp, take a left onto Route 124, go approximately one mile and take a right into Sachs Middle School. I'd love to personally invite you to join us this Sunday, Sachs Middle School, 9.30. Thanks for spending these few minutes with us. Have a great day. Questions and concerns, give me an answer. Don't waste my time, tell it to me straight The truth is getting hard to find I have objections to what I've learned I have questions and concerns Give me an answer